Hello, everyone. Now we're all, we're all together now, and now we'll go through some awesome questions. So first off, we have a question about mentorship and um, job matching opportunities for young professionals. And as a young professional, that also is a question I would like to hear your perspectives on. So how can we get these opportunities, not only for students, but also for people who are just entering the industry? And maybe, Will, you could start off. Yeah, well, um, apply to the Brooke Owens Fellowship, the Patty Gray Smith Fellowship, the Zed Factor Fellowship, the Matthew Isakowitz Fellowship, or if applicable, the Zenith Canada, Zenith Pathways Canada Fellowship. Uh, so there's five of them. Um, if we need more, come talk to me. And we'd love to help you start one or maybe start one with you. Uh, I learned, need to be better at saying no about those things, but I'm not there yet. So happy to, happy to work on that. Join the club. Uh, if you aren't eligible for one of those uh, or they aren't interesting to you, um, that's okay. Um, talk to folks at conferences like this. Talk to the Brookies uh, and the Patties and the Matthew Fellows and the Zeddies. Um, they're great about sharing. Um, it's one of the many things I love about all those communities. They don't hold their secrets close. They, they do like to share them uh, and everything they've learned. Um, but find the folks who, uh, who come to events like this. It's one thing I, I often say. Um, I've been involved for many, many years in an organization called SEDS, the Students for the Exploration and Development of Space. If you're a student and you don't have a SEDS chapter, <coughs> come talk to me. I will happily fund you to start your own SED chapter. Uh, it's like 50 bucks, it's not that, that generous an offer, but, I'm, but I, I've been a student, every little bit helps. Um, uh, they run an awesome conference called Space Vision. If you like SGX, you should be going to Space Vision. It's very, very similar. Uh, and one thing I always point out to students is, look at the, uh, look at the grown ups, look at the non-students who are at that conference. Uh, most of them, most of the folks that you see here at this conference, at Satellite, the stuff that's happening outside of this room, but in the rest of the convention center, most of us go to conferences all the time. Probably most of us go to conferences more often than we would like. And usually we go to conferences because someone is paying us to go to conferences or because I can sell th something that costs a lot of money to things like that. That's what conferences are a tool of business. That's not why you come to SGX as a grown up. You come to SGX or Space Vision or Fusion Forum at Space Symposium in a couple weeks because you actually care about other people and you want to help them find their course in the industry. Um, so uh, again, with me, I, I feel free volunteering myself, but I feel pretty free volunteering everyone else in the room who uh, is not a young professional anymore. Go talk to them about what they do and what they like about it and how they got it and how, why you might like it. Um, look for opportunities like the coffee breaks that Virgin Orbit sponsored just before this one. I got to put that plug in there. Ooh, um, where you can go and, uh, you know, metaphorical ties are loosened or other garments are loosened and you can go and, and sort of say like, I, I, again, I want your job. How, how can I have your job? Uh, in a, in a non-threatening kind of a way. Um, you are, uh, um, one of the wonderful things that comes with youth is that people expect you to be um, learning and people expect you to be iterating. People expect you to be experimenting. It doesn't come off as flaky. It comes off as curious, uh, which is wonderful. So please take advantage of it. Ask lots of questions, study people, and ask for those five-minute coffees. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And Luke, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah. I would like to add, actually, um, I have benefited so much through my own experiences being and being mentored by my peers in this industry. And those are the people that are sitting right next to you. Um, peer mentorship is extremely valuable. Um, so I would say that if, whether you're trying to break into the space industry, you're already here, you've maybe done an internship or two, uh, or you're already, you know, halfway through your career and you've decided to pivot and come into space. Either way, there are tons of people who are in your exact same situation or were in that situation six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, um, who, can, who can help you. Um, yeah, don't just look for, for the people who are, uh, you know, already cemented in something. Um, the, the peers are definitely, definitely a valuable resource. Something I, I wish that I had done more um, when I was an undergrad and started to really understand the value of thanks to my experience as a Brookie, so. Yeah, I really love yeah. that. As a young professional, I really rely on my peer mentorship networks um, and that's such an awesome thing to really uh, develop. So yeah, plus one to that. And Mac? I'd like to address that by asking the audience a question. How many here are immigrants or their parents are immigrants from a country that's first language is not English. 
Yeah. Wow. How many of you have this level of support in this, in your countries in space? Not a single hand. Mm -hmm. So that's why, just like w w Will said, Lori, uh, uh, I can call her, call her Lori now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Deputy Administrator, <laughs> uh, Lori Garber said, if you don't like something, get mad, get boiled up and do something about it, is because when I met Monty, who now has 52 satellites orbiting the Earth, I have met hundreds of students before that. No one ever supported them. No one, I didn't even give them money. I shared my, con my Rolodex with them, my contacts. Call this person, talk to that person. Hey, give this kid a shot. And look at him now. Now he, he's met Jim Frankenstein and Buzz Aldrin and Bill and I, the science guy. And, he's, and, and, uh, and all it took is for me to give him that five minutes that Will was talking about. So uh, you guys are very lucky to be here right now in this kind of community. So all I was trying to do is create an SGX for international students in their own countries. Amazing. Yeah, love all those points. And we've all kind of touched on mentoring. I want to focus in on that because that's been such a huge part of my career. So could all of you talk about ways to find mentors and ways to cultivate that mentoring relationship? Maybe we can start with Luke. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't know if there's a one size fits all answer to that question. Um, but one thing that I will say is um, organizations like SJAC who have a global network are very important because the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a bubble of like-minded people who don't challenge you um, or whose experiences are very similar to your own. Um, in terms of where to find mentorship, you know, yes, there are formal programs. Um, I think I would echo what Will said earlier too, that um, you know, many people in this industry are willing to either in the short term or the long term um, extend mentorship to you. Um, so if you see people doing things that you like, um, yeah, just to echo what Will said earlier. Um, I, I do want to note one thing, which is that um, a lot of people in this industry and in every industry, I think, um, have realized over the past two years that uh, they may be overworking themselves a little bit, um, to put it a little mildly. So I want to caution everybody in this room um, that if you approach someone and you don't hear back, if you cold email, you maybe request them on LinkedIn, something like that, um, I really encourage you to not take that as a reflection on yourself, especially when you're a student. Um, you know, the vast majority of us, I, I like to think, um, you know, do the best that they can and take as much time as they can. But um, yeah, people really need to uh, ensure that they, they don't uh, overstep or overwork themselves and, and burn out. Um, that can happen to anyone. And it happens you know, to people who have good intentions. Um, so definitely don't take it personally and keep trying. Um, but yeah, I, with, with that caveat, I would echo what Will said earlier about finding the people doing things that inspire you and, and approach them. Great, and Mac, did you wanna add something? Uh, I don't know if my experience is unique that I didn't have this kind of support and that's what made me so mad that I have to uh, provide it for other people. I'm in my mid 40s now and I'm finally getting into the industry because I felt like uh, that inclusiveness didn't exist. Uh, my, I didn't have those role models that w were fortunate enough to be able to provide. My role models were Jean-Luc Picard and Catherine Janeway. My counselor was Diana Troy. <laughs> so I relied on fiction to be able to, you know, uh, to hope that that can make me a better person and, uh, and, and, and personally and, and professionally. And uh, so other than, you know, f father, mother, you know, family uh, and uh, a few university uh, professors, there, there was no space basically where, mm -hmm. where I came from. And I just wanted 
change that. So yeah, you I, I, hate, the space. I, I hate to bring the negative portion of that, but I can tell you a lot of people have already experienced the no, the no, it doesn't exist in your country. It doesn't exist. Even here in the United States, it does exist. But you're not allowed because you're not allowed, not, not an American citizen. And even this yeah. kind of stuff, I get questions like, I tar ear. So uh, there's a, there are a lot of, you know, negatives there, but that doesn't mean th those aren't challenges that we can address and fix one at a time. At least we started. I do want to make sure that I add that honesty is never negative. It's just being honest. So don't ever feel like you have to apologize for bringing negativity because it's honesty and it's appreciated. Yeah. So no apology accepted. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> do not. Received. <laughs> and Will, did you want to add one more thing? On uh, I very much agree with uh, the other comments from up here. Um, I'll, I'll say in, in my experience, the best way to get someone to be your mentor is to ask them. Um, so don't forget about that step. Uh, and ask a lot. Luke is exactly right. Sometimes you won't hear back. That may mean they're not interested. It may mean that they are in email bankruptcy. That happens to me certainly sometimes. And sorry if for those of you, I, there's probably someone in the room that I meant to get back to that I haven't yet or uh, will someday. Someday I will. Uh, so, so please do ask often. Uh, I would encourage you, those who are still in school, whether you're in undergrad or grad school, uh, I find professors and um, uh, administrative staff within departments to be a massively underutilized resource for everything outside yes. of the specific confines of preparing <laughs> for final exams. Uh, I think about how, how often do you go to your professor's office hours where you don't have a question about uh, the homework assignment or the final. You just want to ask about their career or your career. If you haven't done that, you may want to think about that. They're usually delighted. Uh, I remember when I was an undergrad, I, I did not do a whole lot of that, but I had one professor that I was really uh, interested in um, who happened to be super famous, was one of the most famous professors at my school. And so I eventually worked up the courage to go to office hours. And I was expecting there to be a line out the door. And there was no one there. I was the only student. And he was actually sort of surprised that I was there. And so I, I said, is this, is this usual? I, like, well, I would have, you're so famous. Like, you're super famous. You're on TV all the time. I would have thought you'd get questions. I was like, no. People do come in usually to ask me what it was like to be on The Simpsons, but no one's ever asked me about like my career. Um, so I don't know if if you have not done that, no no shame, but you could start you could start next next week. Uh, and then lastly, I'm going to refer back to one of Luke's excellent answers about the value of peer mentors. This is a lesson that we learned um, from our first two classes of rookies, our 2017-2018 rookies. Uh, one important part of our program has always been executive level mentors. So we'll pair each student with someone at the top of the game, right? A former NASA administrator, an astronaut, a CEO, a White House you know, senior leader. Two hours a month, one-on-one -on -one time, ask whatever you want. Uh, and that is amazing and also limited for a couple reasons. One thing we learned is that if you're 19 and your mentor has been to space five times and has run NASA, it seems weird to use that person's time to ask about dress code at a job interview. Um, and if you ask them, you know, what should I take next semester? Should I take thermodynamics or should I take stats? It's been quite some years since they took those classes. They don't remember. Uh, and then lastly, a lot of our students, particularly if you might come from an underserved community or if you go to a school that doesn't have a big aerospace presence already, you may never, never have had a mentor in the past and you don't know what to do. We had a lot of people saying like, what's the dress code for a mentor meeting? Do I send an email in advance? Is there an agenda? Is there homework? Are they going to check things? Should I have printouts? And at first, I kind of laughed. And I was like, oh, shoot, those are totally reasonable questions if you've never done this before. Like, yeah, this, that seems silly to me because I've been doing it for a while. It's not silly at all. It's totally not silly. Uh, so now in the, in the Brooke Owens Fellowship and in the Patty Gray Smith Fellowship, and I think in most of the other programs like it, they get two mentors. They get an executive mentor, and they get a peer mentor, a near peer mentor. One of the main functions of your near peer mentors and your peer mentors, like Luke was telling you about earlier, these are the folks sitting next to you, is to say, hey, have you ever had a mentor before? Like, what do I do if they're ghosting me? What does that mean? Um, do I need to buy their book? <laughs> like, is it rude if I don't buy their book? Can I ask them for, like, these are all like totally reasonable questions that someone sitting next to you may have figured out, and you've probably figured out some things that they haven't. So, so, so lean on those relationships. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I, one last I'm so thing. sorry. Go I want to interject because Will just demonstrated something that, I mean, you guys have heard a lot of, do this, don't do this today, but he demonstrated something that is also extremely valuable, which is um, having the maturity and uh, the humility 
to when people you trust and people you respect come to you and they tell you, hey, here's a way that this thing you're doing can be better. Um, here's a constructive criticism that I have of what you're doing and you can take it or leave it. This is what I think. That's something that um, is extremely, uh, I think, under underutilized. It's underappreciated um, because it takes effort to do that. Um, it takes a lot of courage, especially when they're people that you enormously admire and, and respect. Um, so I would uh, encourage you as you're developing your own careers to take that humility, take that ability to take constructive criticism well and see it as the compliment that it is. Um, take that in stride and build that into your professional reputation because it will serve you well. It will go a long way. Yeah. Amazing, definitely. That was an amazing panel. Thanks to all our panelists um, for answering some awesome questions. And with that, I think it is time for the SGX team to uh, make an announcement and we'll, we'll get off the, Cody's gonna kick me off the stage. All right. <laughs>